How we doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mash and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C, and if you're a subscriber, welcome back. Glad to see you here again. If it's your first time here and you're looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, think about hitting that subscribe button below and think about hitting that bell notification so you know when I am putting out a new video. Today, I am super excited to bring you my final review of 2018 before we get into the new year. It is Michter's 10 year single barrel bourbon. Excited to finally own a bottle of this. Let's get into it. All right guys, so since this is my first Michter's that I'm uh, reviewing on my channel, let's get into Michter's a little bit. So the Michter's brand is an historic one, originally produced in Pennsylvania at the historic Bomberger Distillery until it was discontinued in the 1980s. The brand sat until 2004 when it was revived by entrepreneur and now president of Michter's, Joseph Malioko, and relocated to the epicenter of bourbon in Louisville, Kentucky. That makes Michter's a pretty new entry into the world of Kentucky bourbon when you compare it to most other distilleries in Kentucky, but Michter's makes up for that youthfulness by creating creating some truly unique and delicious whiskeys. So far, all of Michter's releases have been distilled elsewhere. In the beginning, the brand bought matured bourbon from other producers before transitioning to having an unnamed distillery contract produce its liquid and handling the maturation in-house. Two years ago, the brand began distilling at its own facility in Louisville, Kentucky, although that juice is still aging. Now we have Joseph Malioka to thank for reviving Michter's, but if it were not for a man by the name of Dick Newman, drinkers might not be tasting the same Michter's whiskeys that we're enjoying today. So when Joe Malioka acquired the Michter's trademark, he consulted with Newman to source whiskey stocks that he could actually bottle. Now Dick Newman was an industry legend who led brands like Old Grandad, Old Taylor, and Old Crow during his time at National Distillers. Well liked and connected, Newman knew where to find excess stocks of bourbon, rye, and sour mash made right in Kentucky. Now, interestingly, Malioka wasn't pursuing a Michter's remake. He and Newman sought to produce whiskeys that were stylistically unique that sent them tasting American whiskeys from the 1970s and 80s. Everything from old dusty someone kept in the closet to straight bowel thieving, they said. <laughs> uh, some searches took them to conference rooms for group tastes while other distillery samples were delivered right to their office. But even after all that, Malioka wanted Michter's to make its own, and the closest thing that they could do at the time was, as he put it, cooking in someone else's kitchen. Uh, the phrase describes Michter's use of its own recipes and control of distillation at an undisclosed distillery. Uh, Michter's uses its mash bills and yeast, uh, and those whiskeys are barreled at 103 proof, well below the industry's 125 proof maximum for bourbon. Uh, that control increased further in 2007 when retired Brown Foreman distiller Willie Pratt became Michter's master distiller and oversaw its production. Pratt also conducted the chemistry work to ensure those whiskeys were duplicable when Michter's opened its own distillery in 2015. So another thing that Joe Maliaco is thankful for Dick Newman for is convincing him to build the new Michter's distillery in Kentucky and, and not Pennsylvania. That gave him access to better talent like Pam Hammond, Vice President and Distillery Manager Andrew Wilson, and CFO Brandon Brunick. Now today, Michter's Master Distiller is Pam Hallman and Master Maturation is Andrew Wilson, together uh, overseeing production and maturation. The two have worked together for about two years and put out some amazing whiskey. Now Hallman arrived at Michter's when Michter's built its distillery in 2015. Since she's been there, she's been part of the team that took the distillery from 500,000 proof gallons a year to the expansion of a million proof gallons. Now, prior to her arrival at Michter's, she was the distillery manager at the world's largest bourbon distillery at the time, the Booker No Distillery in Boston, Kentucky. Now, two things stand out about today's Michter's production process. First, it's committed to an exceptionally low barrel entry proof, which the brand says results in a richer, more flavorful, more easy drinking flavor profile, then doing it the more economical way with the higher barrel entry proofs. Second, all of the Michter's barrels are deeply toasted before charring, amplifying sweetness and enhancing the mouthfeel of the whiskey. So Michter's 10 year single barrel bourbon is distilled at an unknown location, as we mentioned, aged in new charred American oak. This is aged 10 years, bottled at 47.2% ABV, and has an MSRP of about $120. This is barrel 18 G1150. Another interesting tidbit that I found about this, that the barrels chosen for the 2018 release were actually 12 years old. Just a reminder that the age statement on the bottle is always a minimum. So let's get into it. Can I Crack the wax here. All right. Let's get this baby open. Oh, that kind of popped off really quickly. All right. Let's get a nice pour. All right, guys, let's taste some Michter's 10. 
All right, guys, so this has been sitting in the glass for a few minutes, uh, trying to open it up, get some more flavors out. Um, let's take a quick look at the color. Uh, here we have a nice deep copper color, really nice amber, maybe a tint of orange to it. It's really coating the glass well. It's got that glue-like viscosity to it. Always, always so cool to see. You hope it translates to the palette. So let's go into the nose and see what we get. Ah, oh, beautiful nose. Roasted corn, buttered corn. Definitely a lot of caramel, vanilla coming through. So you're getting those classic bourbon uh, nose, uh, nose flavors, but if you go past that, there's a lot of cinnamon, clove, some baking spices to be found in here. And the one, the one note, hmm, that's if I, yeah, the one note that I always get in here on a, on a Michter's 10 is a candied pecan flavor. Mmm. I love that. And then right faintly in the background, you, you may just get a hint of a nectarine or a peach. It's a really nice inviting nose. It kind of, you know, when I, when I sat with this and, and uh, drank with some buddies, everyone pulls different stuff out of the nose. It's a very complex, very complex bourbon on the nose. All right, so let's go into the palate, guys. Cheers and Happy New Year. All right. Yeah, so first sip. Ooh, getting a nice little finish there. First sip, you're getting a lot of caramel, a lot of vanillas. Now the oak that I really wasn't picking up on the nose too much, I'm definitely getting on the palate, especially on the finish. Really nice first sip. A lot of sweetness coming up front. Not really getting those flavors yet from the uh, that I was getting on the nose. Let's go in for a second sip. Mm, there we go. Okay. Brown sugar, cinnamons. That really light fruit character is, is mixed in there right on the end. That nectarine peach flavor, mm, it's really good. It's leaving a nice finish too. There's a, there's a really distinct like gingerbread cookie spice in here that I'm getting, which I love. It's so good. It's like that brown sugar cinnamon mixture. It's weird because it, you know, when you think that, when you, when you think those baking spices, you, you may think it's a low rye, but I was getting that hint of citrus on the nose, so I'm still trying to like figure out what maybe the mash bill is. <laughs> Let's go in for another sip. Mm. All right, so now, now the baking spices are turning to, it's, it's, more, it's becoming more fruit flavor now. You're getting more of those apricot and peach flavors in there, especially on the finish. It's still starting very, very sweet up front. Mmm. Really nice bourbon. It's really kind of taking you through ebbs and flows here. Let's go in for another sip. Let's get into the finish a little bit. Yeah. Definitely light fruit notes. All right, so front of the palate, you're getting that, that really, you know, that... That quintessential bourbon sweetness, the caramel, the corn, kind of takes you into a little bit of a fruitier profile, getting some of those apricot, peach flavors. There are some baking spices mixed in, but now that's kind of dissipating, and now it's finishing with a really distinct nutty flavor. Now, it, I'm not sure if it's that pecans, but it's definitely a, uh, a roasted peanut, maybe a honey roasted peanut there in the end. And that's kind of thrown me off because, you know, when you think about bourbons that are sourced from an undisclosed location, you try to figure out where it could be coming from. So it's weird. The, the, uh, the toasted pecan flavor is something that I pick up a lot in Buffalo Trace, but that, that nuttiness finish, that, that nutty roasted peanut finish is something I get a lot from either Jim Beam or Heaven Hill. So as to where it's coming from, who knows? All right, guys, let's go in for one last sip. Here we go. Mm, okay. All right, so in the beginning when I was talking about those baking spices and, and that little kick of oak, that's kind of dissipated. Now it's becoming a, more, a much, more, much more leveled out bourbon. Very easy to drink, very smooth. You know, a lot of people don't like to use that term, but it really is. And I think from what they're going for, Michter is doing the low entry proof. That's what they're going for, using that extra toasting uh, before they char the barrel. 
Uh, but it's becoming much more fruity now on the palate. I'm getting a lot more peach and apricot, maybe a little bit of cherry there. And then on the end, I'm definitely getting that little bit of roasted peanut flavor, which I really, really love. It's a, it's a great bourbon. I'm really curious of what this is going to become as I sip down on it and get kind of halfway down the bottle to see how this bourbon may change. All right, guys, so in conclusion, Michter's 10-year single barrel bourbon is an absolute delicious bourbon. It's complex. It's got a lot of rich flavors to it. Uh, it's sweet. It's got a little toasted peanut flavor on the end that I love. It's got a fruitiness character to it. Um, for $120, would I recommend it? Now, Mixers gets a lot of flack for how they price their bourbons, and I think that's fair, especially when it's a sourced whiskey and you don't know really where it's coming from. But one thing with Mixers that I found over the course of time is that they produce really great quality whiskey. Uh, Mixers American is one of my favorite. Their bourbons, this toasted barrel, barrel strength rye, is one of my favorite ryes in the world to sip on. Mixers makes incredible bourbons. So for $120, I think for me, I am putting that money into the name and the quality that I know I'm getting. Maybe with that lower entry proof and maybe with the toasting and trying to create that smoother profile, maybe that cost is being put back in a little bit into the bottle here. But I think for 120, you're definitely getting a high quality, super, super flavorful bourbon. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for joining me here on the Master Drum Whiskey Room. Really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, this is my final review for 2018. 2019, as you can see, is going to have some great things in store. I have a lot of plans for the channel. Special guests. We're going to have a lot of stuff coming up. So if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please find me on Instagram and Twitter. I have a lot of stuff coming up. Um, let me know if you've had Mictors 10, what you think of it. Uh, if you think it's worth the price, what your experience is been with different bottles, uh, different than mine. Really curious of what you think. I love chatting with you guys. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. So cheers, happy new year, and I'll see you next year.